after you get your brand new 3D printer, it's easy to just forget about it and print and print for months. And then after a while you start noticing that your prints aren't quite as crisp anymore. Well, the truth of the matter is that while modern 3D printers don't require anywhere near as much maintenance anymore, they do require some attention every once in a while. Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. I want to thank Banggood for providing the tools used in this video and I'm going to have all of them linked down in the description so you can check them out. Now, most parts on your 3D printer are designed so they don't need much maintenance at all. But there are some parts that where it is just inevitable, because they gunk up, there is dirt on there, and maybe they get loose over time. So one of the main points where you have to put some attention every once in a while is your hot end. As that is where the hot material comes out, and sometimes there's some plastic that goes up and sticks to the hot end, and maybe burns up there, or the hot end comes slightly loose and there's some plastic leaking out that are perfectly normal things that you might have to deal with. Now, if you're looking at your nozzle and it's just completely ruined, the easiest thing is to just get a new nozzle, unscrew the old one, screw the new one back in and you're golden. It's gonna be nice and shiny again and there's no abbreviation or anything. To prevent plastic from burning up on your nozzle in the future, you can use what is called a silicon shoe. Most of them are for the E3DB6 hot end, but they might fit your printer as well, if, even if you aren't using that hot end. They just go over the hot end and actually serve two purposes. On the one hand, they protect the hot end from the plastic on other dirt, but they also insulate it so that you will need less power and the temperature is more consistent as the fan that is cooling the part isn't hitting the hot end anymore. I don't actually know why they don't just ship printers with silicon shoes. Now, if your printer nozzle is just clogged up and not actually that ruined, you can also just unclog it, that's way cheaper. Sometimes it's gonna be enough to just heat the filament up just slightly and then pull it out and it might come up with everything, but in many cases you will have to put something very thin up into your nozzle and most things you will have around in your house won't be thin enough as the nozzle diameter is in many cases only 0.4 millimeters. So I'm gonna have two different options linked down below. One of them is very thin needles but actually with them even just with the needles only the tip of them goes through. But what I find works even better are these teeny tiny little drill bits. They come in a set from 0.2 to 3.5 millimeters and you can use them to unclog your hot end. They will even be able to get rid of some more drastic stuff, as they are drill bits. And if you ever need a 0.2mm hole, then I guess you have a drill bit for it now. Depending what kind of hot end you have, it might also be using Teflon tape to insulate some stuff or keep it together. This tape is designed so it is heat resistant, but over time it does get kinda ugly and it might get dirty. So while you're already working at it, just consider to replace it. Teflon tape isn't that expensive. And it's also always a good idea to give some love to your print bed. If you're using hairspray or glue stick, you maybe want to take off the glass plate and wash it under some water to get rid of it. And you always want to check if your print plate is still level. Of course, if you have all the bed leveling, you don't have to worry about that. But if you don't, just go around, check all the corners with a piece of paper and make sure it's nice and level so that your first layer is always perfect. And last but not least, you want to make sure that everything around your printer is nice and tight. You want to tighten all the screws and you also want to make sure that the belts aren't too loose. On some printers there is a way to directly adjust them by loosening one end and then you can pull and, and tighten it again. Okay, this isn't the fun of my sound quality. SHUT UP! But on other printers you might want to use one of those spring clips to tighten the belt. They're really easy to apply and they're gonna tighten up your belt. Now you're gonna have to pay some attention where you put them as many positions on the belt go over some sort of pulley and it doesn't work there. So just look which part of the belt doesn't go over a pulley and put it there. Most of these things that I just mentioned aren't things that you have to check every time. They're just things that if you notice that it's not quite as nice anymore or you just finish your fifth spool in a row then you might wanna check them. If you like this video, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I also have my social media links down in the description so you can check out what I'm doing outside of these videos.
Thanks for watching and until next time.